Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm LJ if you're new to my channel. So today's video I'm gonna be doing a makeup do's and don'ts But today we're only focusing on eyeshadow because I did a makeup do's and don'ts video before and I was mainly focusing on complexion products So today I'm gonna be focusing on eyeshadow now eyeshadow for me has been something that I've just had the hardest time trying to learn when I first started wearing makeup But right now I feel like just like with practice and like watching a lot of makeup videos a lot of makeup looks on Instagram and on YouTube I've learned a lot of tips and tricks I'm um, especially for my eye type because I have small eyelids little to no eye space so I'm gonna be showing you guys on half of my face makeup mistakes that people usually commonly make when they're doing their eyeshadow and then on this side on how to fix those mistakes so that's what I'll be doing this video so if you're interested keep on watching but if you've not joined the LJ fam go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so you're always notified of a new upload so without further ado let's get into the video KLJ, welcome to a channel where it's popping Welcome to a YouTube. All right, so we're just gonna jump right into the tutorial. So one thing about eyeshadow for me when I was starting doing makeup was just figuring out like what eyeshadows to use. Like how do I look at an eyeshadow palette and tell like hmm. Like just basically like transitioning from one shade to the next shade. I had the hardest time figuring that out, especially just looking at a big palette. So today's palette that I'm gonna use in this video is the Morphe 35C Everyday Chic Palette. Palette. I've been really loving this palette. So Morphe recently sent it out to me and looking at this palette It looks really big So if you're like a beginner and you get a big palette like this You kind of wonder like how am I supposed to know what to start? So today's video I'm gonna use a big palette because I feel like it's more effective to learn with bigger palettes because if you learn with small palettes You're not really going to learn, you know how to use bigger palettes because I feel like bigger palettes are harder to learn A lot of Morphe palettes are very organized. So they organize their eyeshadows based on eyeshadows that go together which is an amazing thing if you're using an eyeshadow palette like the Norvina palette and you're not a professional like you're gonna get lost you're gonna be like I don't know what to do with this palette so one thing I really like about Morphe palettes is that they're very organized they organize it based on colors that go together on this side of my face I'm gonna be showing you guys common makeup mistakes that I've made and I feel like that a lot of people make when they're starting to do makeup and then on this half of my face I'm gonna be showing you guys how to correct those mistakes so one mistake I used to make was eyeshadow brushes. I never used to know which brushes to use I do have a video where I talk about like the eyeshadow brushes that I like to use and also in the video I demonstrate on how to use the brushes So I'll leave that at the top right hand corner if you're interested in checking that out But one thing I used to never know is brushes. I used to start with big brushes now I have hooded eyes and I used to use a big brush like this. This is the morphe e27 brush this brush is honestly way too big for my eyes I feel like the transition shade is not going to blend really well when I start I like to make sure that I'm picking a transition shade transition shade can be any shade that is really warm I like going in with warm shades now that does not mean that you can only use warm shades you can definitely use a cool tone shade for a transition shade if you're going for more of like a cool toned makeup look but for me I usually like warm shades because I feel like they look better on my skin so starting off with this brush I'm just gonna pack this on my transition area so I'm just going back and forth and blending it out I am going to be doing a cut crease to makeup look because I feel like that's like the most common type of makeup look okay so this right here is the eyeshadow shade applied I did use this big old brush so it's so important for you to use small brushes if you have hooded eyes now if you have big eyes I admire people with big eyes because you have so much space to work with you can just go in with small brushes big brushes it doesn't matter like you have so much space but because I do have limited space on my eyelids I like to make sure that I'm using a small brush so that I can actually blend my eyeshadows really well so my favorite brush for eyeshadow of course is the Morphe M506 brush you guys see me use this brush all the time I think I have like four of these brushes I just switch them back and forth the reason why this brush is amazing is because it's a tapered brush it's very small and precise to really get on my crease area so I'm gonna go in with that same shade and what I like to do instead is start right on my crease area so I like to raise my eyebrow up a little bit like that and really just start by 
packing the eyeshadow on there so if you're like me and you have small eyes packing the eyeshadow on there is super helpful because it builds the pigment so you don't have to like go back and forth with the shadow and it kind of just gives like a neater finish when you're applying your eyeshadow it makes it very very neat so I'm just gonna pack that and I'm also moving this back and forth a little bit to cover up the empty spaces but I'm focusing this right on my crease area I'm not going above because I'm gonna go in with something else above there and I also like to bring this on the inner portion to make sure that is also nice and saturated all right so this is how I like to do it instead I feel like this looks much neater it looks very clean it's easy to work with so as you guys can see like right here I really don't have that line where I can place a lighter shade on top of it to blend it out so that it can diffuse really well because I use the big brush to apply the eyeshadow it really just covers up all of my crease area so it leaves me with no room for me to apply the next shade the next shade I like to go in with is this shade right here so this is like a mauve shade and so I'm gonna use another big brush this is the morphe m433 brush I used to like to dip in there and just kind of like apply that shade right on top of that like this and this doesn't really make the eyeshadow show that much like you don't really see that mauvey shade as much it just kind of looks you know all over the place as you guys can see like the brush is way too big to be like right here and it kind of takes away from that first eyeshadow shade that we placed right there instead of doing that what I like to do is go in with another morphe m506 brush a clean one and dip into that mauvey shade and I just start really blending out this line at the top right there where the eyeshadow ended I just start by blending it now a rule of thumb for me when it comes to eyeshadow is really just blending the more you blend the better your eyeshadow looks now don't blend it to the point where like no eyeshadow is showing anymore like you've completely blended it all out and it's disappeared you don't want to do that you want to blend it enough so it looks well transitioned but it still shows I like to go in slightly above that shade and just blend out the harsh lines and make sure it's nicely diffused so I like to go back and forth it takes me about like two to three minutes to do this so as you guys can see I'm just going around that eyeshadow trying to make sure I'm blending out the edges I'm not really going inside my crease I'm really going around it and I also like to focus this shade like right here make sure this area is nicely saturated because if we cut the crease we really want the eyeshadow to show around the inner portion So then what I like to do is I like to go in with that brown shade and really just go back again around this area and repack it because when you blend it out sometimes it fades off so you want to make sure that that shade right there is still intact. All right, so as you guys can see, this is like more of like a diffused look rather than this where it's like you can't really tell like where the shadows meet. You know what I mean? You, it just looks like I just placed the eyeshadow on my crease. I placed two different types of eyeshadow on my crease. You can't really tell like where they meet, how it, you know, transitions from one shade to the next shade. So this is how I like to do it instead. Using smaller brushes just makes it much more easier than using large brushes. All right, so I'm gonna do a smoky eye. So so for smoky eyes, what you want to try and avoid is also using big brushes for smoky eyes because if you're going in with a dark eyeshadow shade, you want to make sure that you're using a precise brush because you don't want the black or the dark eyeshadow to go everywhere. Because once the black eyeshadow goes everywhere, you've totally messed up the whole eye makeup look and you're just gonna have to clean it off and start over again, okay? So it's better to go in with a small eyeshadow brush for hooded eyes now if you have big eyes the more space on your eyelids the bigger the eyeshadow brush you can go with one thing I used to do is use a big brush for smoky eyes which didn't make any sense because obviously I'm gonna mess up like you know what I mean so the brush I'm gonna use is the morphe 441 brush so the eyeshadow I'm gonna
gonna use is this shade right here and I just used to pack it on there with really no direction of how I'm placing it just going back and forth with it and packing it and really just not blending it so as you guys can see when I'm going with the big brush look at how much space it's taken up on my eyelid it pretty much covers up the whole eye and it just goes everywhere it doesn't look neat it doesn't look like it's well transitioned the colors don't look well blended so instead what I like to do is I like to go in with another Morphe M506 brush a clean one and I like to just lightly you know saturate the brush with it and then tap off the excess you have to tap off the excess because you don't want to go in with a lot of eyeshadow so what I like to do is I like to start from where my lash line is and just go back and forth I want to put the most product around this area and then diffuse it going outward so I'm focusing this shade right on my outer V starting from where my lash line is and then just diffusing it bringing it up that just kind of allows it to be really nicely diffused it will look well blended um you don't want to place the first darkest shade around this area right here right here should be like the area that is the most faded And then whatever's left on the brush, I just like to bring it in towards the inner portion. And I'm just blending it out. You know, you have to really take your time to blend it. So I'm just gonna take two minutes to blend out this eyeshadow. So whatever is left on the brush, I like to raise my eyelid and really saturate that right on the inner portion, focusing on the crease but around the outer portion of my eye. And then after doing that, I like going back in with that mauve shade. And what I like to do is really just blend out that area. So everything, like when I apply one eyeshadow shade, I'm going back in with the previous shade I've used to blend it out. I don't like leaving any harsh lines on my eyeshadow um, because I feel like with harsh lines, it just doesn't look good. Like if you have harsh lines, it doesn't look like you took your time to blend it. So I'm going back in with that mauve shade and trying to blend out the areas where all the harsh lines have been formed from that dark shade and when you see something getting like a little bit too saturated you just want to go back and blend it out what i like to do is i like to use a little bit of the brush and just kind of like take off a little bit of the eyeshadow on my hand like this and just kind of like blend it out so that it fades off so around this area i'm just going to fade it off a little bit And then I'm gonna go in with that black eyeshadow shade and I'm repacking it on there because every time you blend it out, it fades off just a tad bit. So you just wanna repack it on there and that's it. This is exactly how I like to do my smoky eyes. I feel like it fits my eyes. The black is really just faded onto like the dark brown and then the dark brown has faded off onto the mauve shade. So it's like you can see that transition from like the dark around this area to the dark brown. And then now you can see that mauve shade. Rather than this where everything just looks all mushed together, it doesn't look like it's transitioning. It's like, it just looks like a black eye, like you have a black eye. So this is what you wanna try and avoid. So next I'm gonna go ahead and cut my crease. Now cutting my crease had been the hardest thing for me for a long time. I was doing it wrong for so many years and I really hated how cut creases looked like until I actually learned how to do it. So to cut my crease, I'm gonna use the NYX Professional Makeup Pigment Primer Base. So when you cut your crease, what you wanna make sure not to do is cut it where your crease starts. So if I look up like this, you see how my crease is like right there? What you don't want to do is like cut the crease like right here. You're like, oh, this is where my crease is is right there and then stop right there i did this for a long time for cut creases i used to be like this is my eyelid right here so i'm gonna stop right where my eyelid stops which is right here like right there and then going in with eyeshadow i'm gonna go in with this shimmer shade right here so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to apply that shimmer shade so this is what I used to do and that was the biggest mistake I was making is really cutting my crease like right where my eyelid is. So instead of doing that, what I realized that looks better on my eyes is cutting my crease above my crease. 
Like, I know it kind of sounds weird. It doesn't make sense when you say it, but when you actually look at it, it looks better that way. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cut my crease starting right there. You guys see how that is above my crease? It's like my crease is stopping right here, but I'm going above it around this area right here. So what I like to do is, I like to just start like right here, right in the middle and go this way and cut it in small segments. Now you wanna cut it in small segments because if you swipe it like this and you draw a crooked line and it goes all the way up right here, you've already messed it up. Like you can't bring that back because this is an eyeshadow base, it gets sticky. So you wanna make sure to cut it in very, very very small segments because it kind of gives you a neater cut crease look so you want to just take your time cutting the crease and then I like to bring this in towards the inner portion and I'm swiping it towards the outer portion as I'm going in and then whatever's left on the brush I like to just bring it down on my eyelid area this right here gives me way more space to apply my shimmer eyeshadow shade it makes my eyes appear a little bit bigger and it generally just gives the eyeshadow look a better and cleaner look so I'm gonna go ahead and apply the shimmer shade before the glue dry you don't want to place too much of the pigment primer or the eyeshadow base because the eyeshadow will get a little bit cakey and it will start forming lumps so you want to go in with just a little bit you don't need too much because now the shimmer eyeshadow is not going to blend really well All right, so you guys see how big of a difference that is. Like my eyelids are really, really small, but me cutting my crease above my crease kind of gives me that open look. It gives a cut crease a cleaner look. It makes my eyelids look bigger than they are, but they're really not this big. But I like doing that because it really opens your eyes up a little bit more. It gets your eyeshadow to show much more than when you do this right here. What I like to do after this is go back in with that dark brown shade. And I like to place that right on the outer portion and kind of clean up do you guys see where this harsh line right there is I like to just clean up that harsh line make sure it looks nicely faded and I like to make sure to dust off the excess as I go so that those two shades mix together and they look well transitioned better so the next step is moving into the inner corner shade so so for me for the inner corner shade I like to use a shade that is lighter than my eyelid shade so that it kind of gives that spark it gives that pop into the eyeshadow shade so looking at this palette one eyeshadow shade that just kind of like comes into my mind is this shade right here this is one of the lightest shades in the palette but because this shade right here was super light you want to go in with an even lighter shade which this one works perfect sometimes I like to go in with matte shades instead of shimmer shades so if I was going in with a matte shade one of the matte shades I would go in with is this shade right here or this shade right here both of these are lighter than this shade right here as well as this one right there so i'm gonna go in with that icy shade and show you guys what not to do okay so what you don't want to do is you don't want to place the inner corner shade you don't even want to drag it all the way to like right there like right here i, f I feel like this kind of looks a little bit tacky it doesn't look like it's blended well and then another thing you don't want to do is you don't want to bring it all the way up right here okay you want to make sure that it doesn't come all the way up here and down here okay and if you use a small brush this right here would not happen but if you use a big brush for the inner corner shade sometimes you can just go in and apply way too much now I have seen some makeup looks where this looks really nice but I've really only seen it in bigger eyes like people who have much bigger eyes much bigger space to work with but because I don't have that much space on my eyelid area I just want to add a little pop I don't want to like take away from the eye makeup look so instead what I like to do is I like to dip into that icy shade and I'm using the morphe m431 brush I'm just gonna saturate the brush dust it off 
and what I like to do is see where my tear duct is I like to start right there just start and place it right there I'm not bringing it anywhere close to my under eye like right here the way I did right here I'm stopping like right there like you don't need to drag it all the way there so you just want to place it right there like that and then one thing I've been really really loving is bringing the inner corner shade like right where the crease shade starts so just kind of like dragging it like right there and placing a little bit where the crease shade shows so that they go well together it's not like two separate shades where you can see it kind of bring everything together so as you guys can see they're all going together in one direction you go from the dark shade to the eyelid shade to the inner corner shade and it stops right there instead on this one first off the dark shade comes all the way right here and then the inner corner shade is not blended with the dark shade because it's way too light to blend together and then the eyelid shade is just like they don't look like they're associating with each other they look like enemies they don't look like friends that's just one thing that i've learned with eyeshadow is just making everything blend blend together like it has to transition all right so the next step is the under eye i feel like this part just kind of like completes the look so i always always have to apply eyeshadow on my under eye i like using the morphe m213 brush so this brush right here very very small um especially if you have small under eyes this brush would be perfect for that so one thing i like to do about the under eye is just go in with the shades that i applied on my crease just pack them right under there so go step by step step so the first shade that I applied was that dark brown shade so that's the first shade I'm gonna use I know this can be a little bit scary when you're applying eyeshadow on your waterline it's super scary because you feel like you're gonna poke yourself but you want to make sure that you're applying it really well what I don't like doing is applying that first shade right there I like to start right below my waterline so with this shade right here I like to go in underneath my waterline like around right here and just kind of smudge that you see where this shade right here is meeting this shade right here I like to do that so I like to bring it like from here right down here and I'm just gonna smudge that all the way in and don't be afraid to go low like one thing I was scared of is going all the way down here sometimes I smudge up my eyeshadow all the way right here and it still looks good it doesn't affect the eyeshadow And then what I like to do next is go in with that mauve -y eyeshadow shade and just kind of like pack that right below that shade and smudge it again. Now you might get a little bit of fallout but you can just easily dust that off with powder. And then for the darkest shade that I applied right on this area, I like to place that on my waterline so I'm gonna go in with that dark shade and show you guys what it looks like if you don't put it on your waterline and you put it below your waterline instead so doing this is what you don't want to do you don't want to put it below your waterline so you always want to make sure the darkest shade that you're using to smudge out your under eye is going on your waterline so instead I just like to smudge that right on my waterline I like to just basically focus on the outer portion and boom just like that it just looks like kind of very similar to the top eye except you're just placing it on the bottom yeah I hope this video was not too long I feel like I made it way too long but that is it for the eyeshadow so what I'm gonna do is put on eyeliner and then put on my lashes and finish off the rest of my face and then I'll be back with the final look to you know close up the video so I'll be right back all right guys so this is it for this video I really hope this video was helpful for those of you guys who are really just trying to learn how to do your eyeshadow for me eyeshadow has been like one of the hardest things when it came to makeup it was just like it took me so long and it's just kind of like one of those things where it's like you have to practice and then you also have to kind of like watch people do it so often and then try to do it yourself and try to like recreate makeup looks that you like and then once you just start practicing the more you practice the better you get and then over time you're going to start seeing a big difference with how you're doing your eyeshadow um, so these tips were just mainly for people with my type of eye. People with hooded eyes, small eyelids that like to do a lot of cut creases because cut creases are the main types of makeup looks that I do. But I do know people with like bigger eyes or even people with even smaller eyes than I do will have a different technique of doing their eyeshadow. They probably wouldn't cut above their crease because some people don't have this crease. Some people have a crease but it doesn't really show. So it all just depends 
depends on the type of eyelid that you have so this is not to say that this is exactly how you everybody should do their eye makeup look i would say this is how i like to do it with the way my eye shape is just to make the eyeshadow pop a little bit more yeah i really hope this video was helpful if it was leave your girl a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and join the lj fam and hit the bell so you're always notified of a new upload but other than that i will see you guys in my next video KLJ, welcome to a channel where it's popping you better subscribe got it on lock yeah uh, got it on lock yeah mm, we need more likes more views yeah you can leave a comment too mm, welcome to our youtube mm, welcome to our youtube